Chapter 7. Vogue in poetry is, of course, the third worse in the universe. The second worse is that of Asgoths of Crea during a recitation by their poet master Grunthus, the flagellant of his poem Ode to a Small Lump of Green Putty I Found in My Armpit One Midsummer Morning, for four of his audience died of internal hemorrhaging and the president of the Mid-Galactic Arts Snobbling Council survived by gnawing one of his legs off. Grunthos is reported to have been disappointed by the poem's reception and was about to embark on a reading of his 12-book epic entitled My Favorite Bath Time Gurgles when his own major intestine in a desperate attempt to save life and civilization, leaped straight up through his neck and throttled his brain. The very worst poetry of all perished along with its creator, Paula Nancy Millstone Jennings of Greenbridge, Essex, England, in the destruction of the planet Earth. Prostechnic Vogan Jelt smiled very slowly. This was done not so much for effect as because he was trying to remember the sequence of muscle movements. He had a terrible therapeutic yell at his prisoners and was now feeling quite relaxed and ready for a little callousness. The prisoners sat in poetry appreciation chairs strapped in. Vogons suffered no illusions as to the regard their works were generally held in. Their early attempts at composition had been part of a bludgeoning insistence that they be accepted as a properly evolved and cultured race, but now the only thing that kept them going was sheer blood-mindedness. The sweat stood out cold on Ford's perfect brow and slid round the electrodes strapped to his temples. These were attached to a battery of electronic equipment imagery intensifiers, rhythmic modulators, alliterative residualators, and simile dumpers, all designed to heighten the experience of the poem and make sure that not a single nuance of the poet's thought was lost. Author Dent sat and quivered. He had no idea what he was in for, for but he knew that he didn't like anything that had happened so far and didn't think things were likely to change. The Vogan began to read a fetid little passage of his own devising. Oh, freddled, grunt, bugly, he began. Spasms racked Ford's body. This was worse than even he had been prepared for. Thy micturations are to me as plurdled gabble blotchets on a lurgit bee. Ah, went Ford Prefect, wrenching his head back as lumps of pain thumped through it. He could dimly see beside him Arthur lolling and rolling in his seat. He clenched his teeth. Group, I implore thee, continued the merciless Vogan. My fountain turligrones. His voice was rising to a horrible pitch of impassioned stridency. And hoopciously drangle me with crinkly bindle wordles, or I will rend thee in the gobbert waltz with my blurgle grudgeon. See if I don't. 